Welcome to Poland Daily, the first English news program in Poland. I am your host, Benjamin Lee. Opinion polls show that the ruling party, Prawo i Sprawiedliwość, or Law and Justice, achieved a stable growth in popularity. In the most recent poll conducted by the company Estimator for the Deutsche magazine, Law and Justice gained 1.5 percentage points and has reached 50.2, which is a record high. 50.2% of people interviewed stated that they would vote for the Conservative Law and Justice Party. The biggest opposition party, Liberal Civic Platform, comes in second with almost 23%. The Nationalist Populist Party, Cookies 15, led by the punk rock musician Pavel Cookies, is on the third place with 7.3%. The ex-Communist Party, SLD, would also make it into Parliament with 5.9%. The Agrarian Party, PSL, is hovering just above the electoral threshold with the rating of 5.2%. Three parties failed to meet the electoral threshold. The Neoliberal Party, Novoczesna, or Modern, the Neo-Marxist Party, Razem, together, and the Libertarian Conservative Party, Wolność, or Freedom, headed by the eccentric Korwi Mikke, would not make it into the Parliament. The poll is showing that the policies pursued by our government are appreciated by Polish voters. Our good results in recent opinion polls keep us motivated and are encouraging us to work even harder in the future. The editor-in-chief of the weekly magazine Gazeta Polska argues that stable support for ruling party has a solid base. The Law and Justice Party is seeing great results in opinion polls because it has delivered on its campaign promises. People are seeing that the party's actions are are matching the course it staked out before the election. This is unprecedented in Polish politics. Previously, we had politicians that would lie and make promises that they did not intend to keep. Now, a party that keeps its word has appeared on the scene, and voters appreciate that. The opinion poll was conducted between February 21st and February 22nd. It confirms the trend, also visible in other opinion polls, which showed that the ruling party has increased in popularity over the last six months. This Saturday, the Israeli media stated that after the media pressure they exerted, Poland is now backing down and freezing the Institute of the National Remembrance Bill, and that a Polish delegation will, in the upcoming days, come to Israel to seek an accord on this matter. The Ministry of Justice rushed to denounce the factuality of the news. The news of the alleged decision of the Polish government concerning the INR bill surfaced on Saturday and was spread by Israel's biggest news outlets. Polish Ministry of Justice reacted to the controversial so-called news in an announcement published last night. The message reads, In regards to the information reported by the Israeli media concerning freezing the INR bill, the Ministry of Justice wishes to communicate that any bill passed by the Parliament and signed by the President shall come into force within a predetermined date. Although the MPs of the opposition parties missed the debate over the INR bill, they now decide to criticize its ruling. As a publicist, Marek Krul stated, the opposition has its arguments, calling the bill a defective law. However, it does seem odd that the opposition parties were absent during earlier discussions in Parliament, and only now do they realize the so-called danger to Polish-Israeli relations. Politicians of the ruling party, however, do not see a possibility of the bill coming into power. As per words of Jacek Sasin, chairman of the Standing Committee of the Council of Ministers, although it is over 10 degrees below the freezing point in Warsaw today, there is not a chance of the INR bill freezing over. The process of it becoming a law has begun, and in due time it will come into force. On the 6th of February, the amendment to the INR bill was signed by the President. However, Andrzej Duda forwarded a number of records to the Constitutional Tribunal, which is set to check their compliance with the Constitution. At this point, the exact date of the Tribunal meeting is unknown. However, from the information provided by the surroundings of the head of the state, the judges will set to work as soon as possible. Michał Dworczyk, the head of the Chancellery of the Polish Prime Minister, has announced that the next Cabinet meeting has been moved up to March 1st. 
This will coincide with the National Commemoration Day of the soldiers who refused to yield to communism after the Second World War. Dvorak revealed on Twitter that the first issue to be settled in the cabinet meeting will be a new law proposal that would allow the demotion of military commanders that were guilty of committing communist atrocities against the Polish nation. Dvorak also confirmed that Wojciech Jaruzelski, the now deceased leader of the communist military junta, who declared martial law in Poland in 1981, will be one of these demoted. General Jaruzelski's decision to use the armed forces against political descendants costed the lives of over 100 Poles. The commander of the firing squad that executed the 17-year-old female anti-communist resistance fighter Danuta Sidzikówna Inka in 1946 will also be demoted. The new law is drafted by the Ministry of Defense. It envisages the possibility of stripping officer and warrant officer ranks, including post-mortem, from those who cannot be subject to the duty of military service on account of their age or medical condition. This also concerns the soldiers of the reserve who served the military junta of General Jaruzelski as well as members of the secret police and the security service. Richard Czartnecki, recently relieved from his duty as the vice president of the European Parliament, says he will appeal against the decision made by the parliament after his controversial comment about Rujav van Thun and Hohenstein. The comment that cost Richard Czarniecki his position in the European Parliament was about Ruja Fun's role in a film produced and aired by the NDR, a German public TV. The film was shot as a documentary, with Ruja presented as a main fighter for freedom in Poland. It portrays Poland as a country that has lost its democratic values and is actively violating the people's rights. Richard Czarniecki, who worked with solidarity against the communists, served as vice minister of culture and was elected MEP three times, could not stand the manipulative nature of the film. In an interview with Niezależna.pl, he compared Ruzha Fun with a person who exposed Jews to the Germans during the occupation. We've contacted the former vice president for his comments on the appeal. Probably in the next few days, a week or ten days, I will make my final decision whether I should appeal to the Court of Justice of the European Union in Luxembourg against the procedure to relieve me of my duties. The procedure which is widely criticized and negated by experts and lawyers in Brussels. I have consulted a lot of them and they encourage me to go through with the appeal. I haven't made up my mind yet, but it is very likely to happen. I'm still waiting for the analysis to come, but I've heard from professors of international law that I should definitely appeal. I have two months to appeal. After I file the motion, the proper procedure will be executed, but these decisions are not made quickly. It will take some time. If we do appeal, we hope that justice will prevail. That's it for today. See you next time on Poland Daily.